Hi guys, I'm from LES. In this video, we're just gonna cover importing models and creating new projects. So say if you're on an existing project and the engineer has a couple of new models he wants to give you or files, whatever it may be, he'll take your USB, plug it into the laptop, put your models or files, whatever it is, into the right folder on the USB, you give it back to you and then you'll have to import them. So we're just gonna cover that. So let's say I'm on the laptop. I'm just gonna open up this window. So then the USB is plugged in, okay? This is my USB. Yours will be very similar to this. And the end folder is the main folder we're gonna be using. So basically when you plug this USB stick into your panel, and data transfer, USB sync, once that sees that in folder, it's going to take anything from that in folder into the panel. Once it's in the right format, obviously. And so if you click on the in folder, oh, you have LES Office and two other projects here. You've probably seen them from previous videos. So if you want to create a new project, say, new folder. So we just go back. It's important to make sure they're in the in folder, okay? So we're going to go into the in folder, new folder. We call it whatever the project is, if it's the name of the project itself, or we'll just do LES test. Just for trying purposes. So that's your new project. So any models or files or anything we're bringing into that project, we want to put in that folder. Okay. It's empty at the moment, as you can see. So let's say we have a couple of models here I want to bring in. Yeah. So I'm gonna bring in a row test. Okay, so we have an XML here. I'm just gonna copy and paste that in. So we go back down to in folder. Uh, LES test is a project. I'm just gonna paste that model in. So that's my XML. Docker has gone in there, and then we go back into documents there's a dxf there as well i want to bring in and um, this okay so I'll copy and paste this copy down again this is your usb in folder LES test let me drop that dxf in there so there are the two files i'm going to be bringing in so let me just go back a second this global file, so this is basically has all my coordinate systems that I want to use. I don't probably going to need to use. So you see, I have uh, ITM and ITM 15, and I'm pretty sure it's or 1970 Republic of Ireland 1975. Yeah, so basically, and um, they're the coordinate systems that I'll be using predefined. When you go into the settings and the localization on the panel, when you go into predefined, you select Ireland. That's where they'll be. Any of those um, .lok files, the localization files that we brought in should be there. Okay. Or you can just put them in if you're using ITM15. Just put it in um, with every project that you need. If you could be working on ITM in a different project, or you could be working on 1975 in a different project. You can just put them in with the the folder, the project folder, and it'll take them in. Okay, so we have four projects at the moment. I'm not taking into account that global folder, that won't come in as a project. So I've already had these three in. This LES test is gonna be a new one. So imagine you take your USB out, go to your panel down of your machine. Okay, so I'm gonna have to plug in my USB into the panel, go to tools, data transfer, Actually, just before we do that, I'll show you. So we got the project. So I've only three projects there at the moment. LES Office, Mungra, and M5, okay? <clears throat> so tools, data transfer, USB sync. So that's just the progress bar. That's going to show you what you're bringing in and what 
you've taken out as well. So when you sync the USB, it's gonna anything that's already on the panel, it's gonna back up onto the USB every time you sync. And anything new on the USB, it's gonna bring it into the panel. So just there's no harm in looking at what's actually brought in before you press OK. This it's it's a bit slower on the simulator, it wouldn't take this long on the well depend on the file size, it wouldn't take this long on the panel. But uh, yeah, so we'll just show you what I mean, but there's no harm in looking at what's actually been brought in and what's taken out and what's happened to it in the process. So we look here, the foil project already exists. So I'll write if you want. So we see these bits of text here. You want to be reading them. So you can see LES test, that's the new project. It's copying that, okay. It's converting LES by the road model test, which is the DXF hasn't converted that to anything, that's okay. So the XML you can see here, okay, uh, converting road model test LES XML. And now it's after converting that into, there's a geo, so in that XML file, there was a .geo file, there was a .trm file, and then there was four, see the untoiled underscore zero one L3D, so they're road, road lines, road line models. So in that XML, there was these six different foils. So it's after bringing them all in, okay? So we should be able to find them. <clears throat> and it's also brought in the separate DXF that we brought in, okay? So there's no harm in reading through this. So you can see copying a uh, USB global folder, global on 3D. That's what's taken in from the USB and copying from Icon 3D to USB. So this is what the USB is taken off the panel. There's no harm in just reading through that. So that's that done. Now if we go back into settings. So project, I'm still on LES office. That's what I was using. Say if I change in a new project, select it. Now you see this new project has come in, LES test. Select that. That's our new project, blue arrow. See with the new project, um, you're gonna have to select a localization. See where this is empty. So if you do start a new project, you have to select that localization. So again, touching on this, this is all alph alphabetical. So anytime you go into that, it's gonna come up Australia. It doesn't mean that you're using the Australian grid. So you just scroll down to Ireland and ITM rep 15, and then that's the geoid we're using. Select OK, that's fine. Spanner just show you the geoid is selected. Okay. Okay, so you have that localization selected. <coughs> so project, we have machine, it's probably gonna be the same, it's a different machine. You just change the machine. It's totally up to how you're operating. Position sensor, we will have to change because it's gonna be a different model. So you won't really have to worry about that. It's just because we're on a simulator. Your position sensor is gonna stay the same. It's gonna be the Icon GPS 80. So services. So this is the model that I brought in, road line test LES TRM. So we add that, okay. So now that we have all these full, so something selected in all of these, we can go to work. I'm just gonna change this real quick. Let me select more, okay. You won't have to worry about that on the machine, it's just there. So everything's selected so we can go to dig. Okay, so that's, the model that I have at the moment. It's a pretty big roading job. Looks like there's a couple of uh, slip roads on and off, probably off the motorway. So that's the model I'm digging to now. That's just basically going through creating a new project and uploading new models. Um, I'll just show you actually. So exit out of that. Just to show you what we actually brought in. So tools, foil manager. So this LES test is the one that we've just brought in. And select on that. Now this will tell you what I've brought in. So this is on, Irish TMF 15 is on because I've selected that. Uh, the road model, the DXF that I brought in is there. The GEO that was in the XML foil. The .TRM that was in the XML. These are XML. And then the four road lines. So it's brought them all in. Okay, so you can see them. If you go, say, see the DXF, the surface. So we have the TRM, that's your reference model, health model, 
So we can go to DXF. There's that DXF. Again, DXF, you can just use it as sort of like a background image. So you can layer it on top of the model you're working on. You can use just sort of position reference. You can't actually select the line <clears throat> or dig to a height. So we could add that in. Okay, that's dropped in. Probably quite a big foil. You can preview that. So there's the preview. So again, you can scroll around, have a look and see what it looks like. You can zoom in. So we'll escape out of that. There's also a .geo you can use. Coordinate foil. So you can add that in. Okay. So if we uh, drop out that DXF. Remove the theorem. So just a dot GEO file, preview it. And then it's showing you all the points basically in the lines. So you can use that as a background as well. Give you better ideas to where you are. Not as necessary really as the DXF. So again, drop the DXF in. Leave it slow. Okay, so back into dig. Okay, a bit slow at the XF. It's probably just slowing this laptop down. It's not wouldn't be the greatest, but it shouldn't be. It wouldn't be like this on the panel. It's not that big of a foil. Okay. Okay, so you can see the model that we're on, okay, yeah. And just to show you real quick that it did bring in the road lines as well. If we wanted to use one of those road lines as a guideline, that's the four of them brought in, okay. We're gonna be covering that in a different, uh, different video just to show you that was brought in. That's the four road lines. And then the dot EO. We can select it here. There you go. And then we can pick a polyline off that if you want to use the guideline. But just just wanted to show you. And again, the purpose of the DXF, I'll show you real quick, is that I can turn off those triangles on the model. Back out. So that's my DXF there, okay, just the lines. I'm still getting my cut and fill values because I still, I'm still still digging to the dot .trm, the digital terrain model. I just have the triangles turned off so you can more, more or less see what line you're on. We're still digging to the 3D sources. You just can't see them, okay? So basically, that's it, guys. So creating a new project and importing models. Okay, cheers.